The Women Conquer Business Show is an educational how-to women in business podcast that features stories, marketing news, and real-life experiences from fun and friendly hosts, Jen McFarland and Shelley Carney. Join us as we dive into the details so you can slay marketing overwhelm, streamline processes, and amplify your impact. You'll learn strategies and tactics, leadership skills, and practical advice from successful women entrepreneurs to help you grow, nurture, and sustain your business. And we're well, here. We're here. Hello, and welcome to <laughs> Women Conquer Business. Yay. I'm your host, Jen McFarland, joined by Shelly Carney, as Hello. always. Yes. And today we are going to talk about how to get more comfortable on camera. This is a question that I get all the time because I'm on a camera a fair amount. And I think it's really important to to kind of talk through some of these things because this is a big part of content marketing. It's a big part of getting your message out and really talking to people. If you're doing events, attending conferences, you know, or want to build your brand in video content, part of it is you have to be able to engage with the camera and be engaging. So, but that all starts with comfort. <laughs> so, uh, but before we begin, we kind of wanted to just touch base with each other, um, talk about some things that are going on in the world. So hi, Shelly. How are you? Hi, Jen. I'm doing super. Uh, everything's going according to plan uh, in my life. We're going to go visit my mom starting tomorrow. Toby and I are driving over to Arizona to uh, go to her house, set up a in-home studio so that I can do my work from there. My brother has been working on getting internet into their home, which is a process because they live in a retirement community. So uh, he had to call some of their neighbors and find out what they use and what works best. And the one that he uses, he's nearby, but the one he uses is not does not cover their area. So uh, he's been working on getting that done. And of course, Memorial Day is coming. So he had to, you know, put it off by day uh, because they're going to be off uh, closed for Memorial Day or whatever. So uh, I'm hoping to have internet for next week's show. If I don't, I may be on my phone. We don't know yet. So we're going to play it by ear. But um, I'm happy to be going to visit my mom. Toby and I are going to visit her Saturday morning. Uh, he's been wanting to see her and see how she's doing and and uh, just kind of get a feel for what her life is going to be like and, and sure. anything that we can do in our home to help make things easier for them. Uh, we'll, we'll take care of that this weekend. Absolutely. And um, yeah, it's just so great to have people in your life like Toby that um, is going to help and, and take care of things with you and do things. I started giggling because when you were saying you could be on your phone well, <laughs> right before we got started, Shelly was teaching me how to use StreamYard because I, I haven't really used it before we started doing this show together and we did a test show and, <laughs> and it was like called test event Whoops. and like Toby is awesome and then we accidentally <laughs> published it and sent it so <laughs> so we have that is not next week's show um and it could be that I'm by myself which is fine because last week you were with Toby and how did that go it went very well of course uh we're used to doing this. The biggest problem was after the fact when YouTube made some random yeah, robot kind of... decision to make both our videos private on YouTube. Yeah. So uh, we had to, I had to fix that when I got back from my yurt. And, how did you fix it? Did you fix um, it or did it just happen? I did. I did. How, I went you in do? and I edited the video and then it said oh. it so that it was public again. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, I edited was... mine too. So that must have been what happened. <laughs> yeah. So it came back online and then I was able to share it and get it out into the world. Um, and, but yeah, no, it's great. And, and that's the thing, like, you know, getting comfortable on camera, doing all this content marketing, it's all about kind of rolling with it. That's kind mm -hmm. of what you have to do because a lot of this stuff happens. Um, before we start, I really, um, you know, one of the things about marketing is it's, you can't be tone deaf to what's going on in the world. And I, I really felt compelled to kind of talk about, you know, we've had so many mass shootings lately. We've had so much going on in the world. And I feel like if we just blast through and talk about everything like nothing is happening, there's a, a chance that we become tone deaf marketers. 
you know, we have to really acknowledge that a lot of people are struggling right now. There's a lot going on in the world. Um, it's difficult and tragic to see the pictures of these babies who were murdered in Texas. I mean, they're just small kids and, you know, it, it's so traumatic and, um, difficult and seeing posts from people who are parents who are very concerned about sending their kids to school and, and all of these things. Um, I think it's important to um, talk about it a little bit and um, process through it a little bit. And then also how it relates to your marketing because it actually does. So um, what are you, you said that you talked about it. Oh, sorry. Whoa. <laughs> There's an alert going on in New Mexico, everybody. Everybody take cover in New Mexico. Yeah, there's a fire in the Bosque Trail. Um, oh, that's I'm just bad. letting everybody know, stay away. The Bosque Trail is the trail right along the Rio Grande River and goes right through Albuquerque. So, oh, wow. yeah, fires are in that area. Sorry. No, uh, that's okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, so you said that you talked about the the shootings and everything last week on or yesterday last night mm -hmm. last night okay mm -hmm. um, yeah we have a show called news and views and we talk about news uh and we started off our sh our, our news coverage with uh the shooting and basically how people in positions of uh government and, and so on are handling it and how people are feeling and what can be done you know uh in in the chat there it gave everybody an opportunity to express their feelings you know what they thought was an underlying um, theme that they were seeing of why these things are happening and and how we've moved into uh this you know uh, toby talked about in the 60s having there was a school shooting and and that was a huge deal and and now it's like there's been 27 school shootings this year so what has happened to us to get us to there um why is why are we at living through this and 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 it gets to be such such an so many times so so often that it's like you can't even finish crying about the last one before the next one happens. It's it's tragic and it's sad and it it's stressful and you know we Dramatic. we're scared. You know I, I, we have a very scared population of parents who are like crying out for relief. You know some answers. Uh, what what can be done to improve our schools? and make things safe you know we, we were like we didn't like the shutdown during the pandemic we didn't like that our kids had to do online learning but they were a lot safer <laughs> you know right. uh, there were a lot fewer school shootings when the pandemic was going on because schools were closed so it's, you know? it's a, there's <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of you know i think that for me it's like we don't want to become blase about it like right. oh it's just the world we live in you know um and i i think that you have a lot of really good resources that you wanted to share about um if you're really struggling um you know it is important to talk to somebody about you know how you're feeling um reach out if you we have um you know there's the national suicide prevention lifeline there are a lot of resources out there if you're struggling with this um, do you want to share any of those? Yeah, we'll resources? talk about that. Um, so it's important to look after your mental health after tragic events. And this is definitely one of those times. Here are a few recommendations for self-care in the coming days. Um, talk about what you're thinking with someone you trust. If you want to write something in our chat, if you want to reach out to us, uh, we're fine with that. We're here for you. If you uh, have, you know, friends and family you can speak with, uh, please do that. Get those feelings out of your, you know, out of your cysts, those feelings, so they don't stay bottled up. Keep to a normal routine as much as you can with getting up and eating and going to work and uh, 
all of the routines can help keep us grounded and uh, feeling like we're still okay. Avoid unhealthy coping mechanisms like drinking or drugs. They just prolong the problems and the, and they don't help you to process your feelings. Take a break from social media if you feel like that's something you need to do. And a lot of us need to be reminded of that. Um, get off social media for a while and look at, you know, get out in nature and talk to people and get into the 3D world again. Um, help other people if you can do what we're doing, reach out, say, we're here, talk to me, uh, you know, share your feelings and then reach out. If you need extra support, here is the, uh, national suicide prevention lifeline, 1-800-273-8255. Or you can text H O M E the word home to 741-741 for free 24 hour support from the crisis text line. Reach out and get that help. Now, more than ever, we need to come together uh, as a country, as a, as a community, to support each other and to support parents who are afraid, you know, um, of what's possible, what's possible for their children. So um, we're here, and we feel that we feel the pain that you feel as well. I, yeah, the pictures are just heartbreaking, and the posts that I see from my friends with children are also heartbreaking. Um, I want to also transition a little into what this means for your marketing. Do you have that link or should I attempt yeah, yeah. to share I'll get something? it. I'll get it. You go ahead and talk. Because <laughs> we didn't talking. go over, I, I need to remember how to share links and stuff. I'm afraid I'm going to like blow up the world here with my lack of stream yard knowledge. Uh, I, there was a, the, I saw something on Twitter this morning that is exactly like what not to do. Um, and that's what we're going to, um, oh, I was hoping to like, can we show it? How mm -hmm. do do I'm going to share a screen. Oh. Um, so yeah, here we are. Um, so one of the, one of the things that you want to look at after tragedy is what are you sharing on social media? Are you, do you, are you publishing a lot of posts that are going to be uh, interpreted as tone deaf, you know, it's one of the reasons we're talking about it now is we want to acknowledge there are things going on in the world much bigger than whether or not you feel comfortable on camera. And we want to acknowledge that there is a lot happening. So we don't sound like business as usual all the time. That's one of the reasons why we take time out when there are so many tragedies. I mean, we've had We've had tragedies in Buffalo. We've had tragedies in Texas. We've had tragedies in California all in like a week, I think, you know, just a lot of, a lot of people have died. So one of the things about your marketing and especially heading into a Memorial Day weekend where you maybe have a lot of things set up, you just don't want to appear tone deaf. Um, and this is an example of what not to do. Um, here is, and, and what you're seeing at the top is somebody's commentary on it. Um, the commentary is in light of recent events, we've canceled all of our Memorial Day sales promotions. Instead, use promo code profit from tragedy for 30% off all purchases. So what the, what the, the bulk of the post is saying is, um, since we're in the business of helping handle stress and creating, this is what the company wrote that does sound tone deaf, in my opinion. Uh, since, it, since we are in the business of helping handle stress and creating space for, men, for our mental health, I will share a code here for our newsletter subscribers. Use code HUGS30 and get 30% off your purchase through Tuesday. You know, and it's, it's doing things like that sounds tone deaf. It, as the, the commentary on Twitter says, it's profiting from tragedy. You absolutely don't want to do this. Uh, you want to, uh, some people say, pause all of your scheduled content. Um, I think it depends on what you're sharing. Um, you definitely don't want to change your promotion so that it appears that you are trying to capitalize on um, so many tragedies that we've had. And you want to find ways that you can talk about things. That's why we are talking about everything that's going on the, in the world now. And if it means you need to pause your campaigns or rethink what it is that you are sharing in your marketing in light of tragedy, you do need to review that and look at it 
so that you are in ensuring that you're not putting things through a lens that um, makes you look like it's business as usual and I'm profiting from so much debt. So it is a time that, you know, a lot of people want to talk about a lot of what's going on in the world, whether it's Ukraine or other things that are going on, you know, it's a time for communication. It's not a time for pushy sales necessarily. It's not to say you can't sell anything, but this is definitely not an approach that you want to go with. And I think that that is why it's important that we talk about tragedy. And then we also talk about it in light of how you go out and engage in the world, knowing that there's a lot of pain in the world um, and then acknowledging it and navigating it with a little bit more grace than a coupon code that capitalizes on it. Yeah. Well, and I uh, equate this to um, this week, we, the news came out or whatever that uh, there was a billionaire created every 30 hours during the pandemic. And it makes, and a lot of them were from drug companies um, and it makes you think about, you know, people who are profit from other people's tragedy. And yeah. it makes you kind of wonder, you know, it, sh is that right? Is that a good thing? I suppose it kind of depends on if you're, if you've become a billionaire because of everybody needing to buy a particular drug and now you've benefited from that. Is there a way that you can then share that benefit with the world you know can you give money to you know fight world hunger or whatever but how can you stay on the right side of things right how can you be compassionate uh, and lead with love and i think we should ask ourselves that no matter what we're doing uh if if we're just doing a regular show or if we are trying to address a tragedy, how can I lead with love? How can I be compassionate to people? And if you keep that in mind, I think the money will actually just come anyways, because yeah. it's just the rule of the universe that when you're doing really good things that are helpful for people, then money just comes to you anyway. Absolutely. And we've talked about this a lot. And, and I think that one of the things I haven't shared on the show, but I've shared with you, Shelly, is how I've been showing up and doing the same thing now for a long time. And now all of a sudden, you know, I, people are just sending me clients. I'm not having to do a lot of active marketing to get people because when you show up, then people are like, Hey, I, I think that you have something to share that's really important. I think you can help people. So I get a lot more client referrals <laughs> and then I just talk about the issues and talk about do my thing and people come and the money comes. And, and that's really fundamentally, I know that gurus tell you all kinds of things. That's fundamentally how all of this stuff works. You show up, you do your thing, you share your knowledge. People want to be a part of that. And that is, that is how this works. So I don't care what other people say, because I know that my experience has been, you show up, you do your thing. And yes, the money comes, the clients come, all of it. So um, with all of that in mind, let's, let's do shift into what we came here to discuss. Um, I think it is part of sharing your love and sharing your compassion is also being able to be engaging in all the different ways that you're sharing your expertise. And part of that compassion comes from feeling very comfortable when you are on camera, when you are engaging with other people, whether it's a podcast or through a blog or you know anything like that. Um, and Shelly, I feel like this is way more your, <laughs> like when I talk about how to be comfortable on camera, a lot of times I'm talking about it based on my own personal experience, but I know that you talk through this with your clients and you really have, um, can you talk a little bit about your background? Because you have been in television and worked in this for a long time. And I think that, you know, a lot of what you have to share on this is based on, you know, a lot of experience and expertise. All right. Well, it was uh, 2011 and I signed up for a film tech program. And within that, I became a producer of, of, uh, of a video series. Uh, that's That was my first experience with putting together a team, creating videos, putting them on YouTube, uh, and that included 
you know, all the way from pre-production through post through post-production, all of it. Uh, so I learned a lot. And then I took acting classes after that because I worked with actors. I was a producer working with actors. I had done, uh, you know, uh, auditions and we, we chose uh, the actors and I worked with them during every shoot. So I got a real good um, excitement and feeling for what they were doing. And I went through acting classes myself. And a lot of it is just about don't worry so much about the words. Worry more about conveying the feeling to people yeah. um, that that you need to get across because people will remember how you made them feel more than they will remember anything else. And um, I also took improv classes, and you know, so I and I took a public speaking class, and I learned that uh, you don't have to know everything. You. And there are times on our show, uh, Toby and I, and he'll be talking and talking and all of a sudden he can't think of a person's name. Like, uh, you know, like he couldn't remember one of the uh, prime ministers of China or something. And so he's like, oh, I'll remember it. Uh, I can't remember his name. Three people wrote in the chat the name, you know, that he wanted. Oh, gives <laughs> oh, them a go. chance to participate and to feel smart yeah. because they provided that for you. So don't ever worry that you're not going to know an answer. Uh just do with the, you know, do what you can with what you know and what you have, and then let other people uh, who are in your audience feel smart by also helping you out and providing those those answers. Yeah. Don't, you know, I think that's a huge weight off your shoulders when you realize I don't have to know everything. I just have to show yeah. up. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I when I first started my business, I thought, well, I should take an acting class. I should take improv. I've actually never talked to anybody who went. <laughs> like did all that no wonder you're so comfortable on camera because you have failed so many times on well, you've stage taken the acting that, you know, classes this is nothing <laughs> yeah i mean it, it kind of does it and and that's one of the things that i tell people just based on experientially like without having the background that you do is like you know the best way to get over you know your fear or you know the best way to feel comfortable on camera is to practice that's right <laughs> absolutely be prepared practice and don't give up. Yeah. Yeah. Those are your three steps. Go. Those are the three steps. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, you know, I like this first point that you have here, which is, you know, is there fear here? There's always um, fear of getting up in front of people. It's just ingrained in our brain, but yeah. it's something that we can learn through practice and preparation to quiet that down, right? To, you know, I've done this before. I've been here before. I can do this. I don't have to know everything. And then talk, you know, give yourself that little pep talk and then do it. And then the more you do it, the easier it is. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, it's so funny because one of my uh, friends and colleagues, Bridget, was giving a presentation and like she took a selfie. It's this great selfie right before she goes to talk to a chamber of commerce. And and she's like, and I feel like I'm going to barf, you know, <laughs> I was like, you got this, you know, and we were, you know, she, we were chatting online and stuff, which is why I don't feel bad talking about it. And, um, and what I said was, you know, I get really red and I always feel freaked out and I have so much fear and then, you know, and I do it anyway. And she was like, yeah, I do it anyway. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about like a few months ago was how like I was I was in a documentary <laughs> for an article I wrote about click funnels. The thing I didn't tell people is in the interview, I'm wearing like a turtleneck that goes up to like my jaw, basically, because when I get really anxious about things, I get like super red, like everywhere, you know, and afterwards I talked to the cameraman and I was like, so did I turn really red? And he's like, no, not really. And I said, what about here? And I pulled down my turtleneck and he was like, oh my gosh, he's like, it's like crazy, you know, and it's all the anxiety that comes up and the fear and like, what's going to happen next, you know, that as a public speaker, as someone being interviewed, those things can really like mess with you, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what I want to share is like, it's always going to be there and you just do it. That's right. Anyway. That's right. I, <laughs> re know. I still remember standing at the side of the stage wearing a bikini and they call my name and I'm like, I have to walk out there now. I have to go. And I had to go <laughs> stand out there by myself and do these poses uh, on a, on a stage in a bikini. So 
it doesn't get any worse yeah, than that. Oh, that's my nightmare. So doing the so rest awesome. of this is easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> right? So um, one of the things that when I was prepping for the show today that I thought was really great, and it's something that I actually do, um, but it would never have occurred to me, I, I was researching it, is you know to develop a relaxation routine, um, which mm -hmm. is what I do, Absolutely. Um, or dance it out. And mm -hmm. I sometimes yep. I've done both actually. Mm -hmm. And it just depends. So if you are like me and have all that anxious energy, um, or you get really uncomfortable with the idea of being on camera, develop some way that you can help yourself guide yourself through this process, whether it is relaxation through like, I do a lot of meditation. I do, I've done visualizations around like expected outcomes about yes. things, yes. you know, all Very of good. that kind of stuff that really kind of grounds you, mm -hmm. um, or you can just dance it out. And I've done that too. Like, you know, the lights I have in my office and stuff, they actually coordinate to music, which is the funniest thing. And so I'll like crank up the music on my phone and like have a little disco party in here. And it, it releases some of that anxiety. And then like, after you've kind of either grounded and relaxed or let the energy out, then the camera just seems to be less of a, an issue. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the reasons it. we have that fun little dancing music at the beginning of our shows so we can like yeah. let's Let it get out. into it <laughs> let's get ready <laughs> uh but yeah absolutely great to have those uh, routines that get you into that headspace and uh after you've done them long enough it's an automatic thing right you just yeah. instead of it taking five minutes of meditation to get you there it's you've done it so many times you're just there let's just go Absolutely. So yeah. Get, yeah. Do it. <laughs> you know, um, I, I love this next bullet point and I have to say that, um, it's also funny because I'm really kind of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of person. <laughs> I don't always know what's going to come out of this mouth. So I, but I feel like since we've done this show together, it's been a lot easier to feel grounded. Mm -hmm. Um, and what the bullet point says is what to say and who to say it to. Would you like to, you wrote this. So what would you like to say to that? Well, that's part of your preparation, right? If somebody asks you to be in a summit or to speak to an audience, you are prepared. You know who the audience is, you know what your topic is, you have it outlined, uh, you might have visual aids to keep you on track. And all of those things are a comfort because yeah. you have, you know, okay, then I'm going to say this and show this slide. And then I'm going to say this as I show this slide. And it keeps you, you know, really focused. I know what yeah. I'm going to talk about. I know who I'm speaking to. So I have an idea of what what their issues are, what their what kind of information they're looking for and how to best connect with that person. So yeah. that all that information is going to help you put on a really good presentation. Absolutely. And that's kind of one of the key components of content marketing which being on video writing blog posts, things like that. These are all content marketing strategies. They're all far more successful <laughs> the more you know about your customers because yes. it's a lot easier to talk to them. It's a lot easier to look at the camera or even a couple inches above the camera and pretend that they're right there and and talking to them, you know. Um, but it, it is very helpful the more you know about who you're talking to, what their issues are, and then sharing with them like a friend, like how how you can help them and what it is you're going to do. And you have to plan that. That's right. And, and it helps to, to picture somebody, right? I know that today I'm going to be talking to people like Jen. So I'm going to picture talking to Jen when I look into the camera. And uh, of course, it's easier when there's two of us here to have that conversation, that back and forth and gives, sure. gives the other person a chance to think of a new thing to say while the other person's talking. <laughs> Absolutely. But like, it's also good to just have that idea of, you know, I mean, there's also the chance with the way that we do this stuff, it's live, there's a chance that something could go horribly wrong and our internet can fail. And, you know, being prepared also helps you go through that on your own if you had to. And, and that's the thing, like when you think about what to say, who you're saying it to, and then, you know, I like to do the what if game. <laughs> I really do. Like I'm a project manager at heart. So, you know, what would happen if everything went horribly, terribly wrong? It doesn't freak me out because if you think about it and plan around it, then it helps you navigate it if something did happen. 
And so when you're really planning things and thinking through, it really can help you um, in times where it doesn't go as expected. But most of the time, everything goes exactly how it's supposed to, yeah. unless you hit publish show, test show, Toby's <laughs> Awesome, <laughs> which we did right before we went live. It was pretty awesome. We just put that out in the world. So that out in the world. Okay. So um, tomorrow, we're, or tomorrow, next week, we're going to talk about this in way more depth. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, show flow, um, scripting templates, things like that. But um, tagging on to what to say and who to say it to, you have to have some sort of notes or show flow or slides, something that will be your guidepost, right? Yeah, absolutely. It keeps you on track. And uh, it, like, you, if you expect, okay, at this point, I'm going to make a joke and everybody's going to laugh and then we're going to do this and that, and that doesn't happen. You can then go, okay, well, that didn't work next. <laughs> oh, moving on. <laughs> moving on. Let's go on to the next thing. Uh, and that's what comedians do, right? If, if a joke bombs, they just move through it. They just go on to the next con uh, next joke. Okay. Yeah. Well, that didn't work. I'm taking that out. <laughs> <laughs> And then, then there's the whole, you know, looking good and sounding good. This kind of goes down to, comes down to, you have to make good content. Like it has to be at least somewhat entertaining for people. And I talk with my hands. So like I end up being at least entertaining for people who think that that's hilarious. And I have really worked on my environment, getting a good microphone, things that really help with that. Um, I think that in the beginning, it really is about showing up and doing it. And then as you evolve, like I have quite the collection of microphones over here from that evolution. And, and that might be what happens with some of you as well, is you may improve your camera over time. That was the conversation last week, which is how do you get started? And then what are your first upgrades after that? So if you didn't catch the last week's show, then um, understand that, you know, looking good and sounding good is also an evolution. Um, and in the beginning, it might be, you know, wearing clothes. I mean, do you know if there are certain clothes that work better on, on video? Well, sometimes stripey things like this can, can give off a weird pattern. So you just kind of have to look at yourself on camera and say, does this give off a, a more pattern is what it's called when it kind of goes woo woo wavy looking <laughs> uh, because it's stripey for some reason. Uh, it'll do that sometimes. Other than yeah. that, you just want to make sure that you're happy with the way you look, then you're going to feel more confident, right? Um, yeah. The best way to look good is to have good lighting. Uh, so start with your good lighting that that lights you well and evenly and um, gives you, an, you know, that well-lit, happy glow, yeah? And then um, do the best you can with your hair and makeup to look natural, but nice because these are going to be out yeah. there for a really long time you don't want to go back and look at it and go oh my god i'm so ugly and take it off because the content is important and if you yeah. can't you know get good with how you look and and the way your voice sounds then uh it, you know you're not going to be happy with the final product so try to watch yourself a little bit in the beginning and as if, you know, take a step back and say, okay, if this was a friend of mine, what would I say? You know, not like, oh my God, I'm so fat or my hair looks horrible or whatever, but, you know, try to take a step back and go, okay, my friend, uh, you, you look nice and, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're modest, which is good because you don't want to be hanging out if you're trying to be marketing and talking serious, uh, topics, you know, want people, tuning in just to see how pretty and busty you are, that sort of thing. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, modest looking, professional looking, and uh, that you carry yourself well, and that you exude confidence. That's what's going to attract people. As for your voice, try to be as relaxed as possible. And that's what I do. And I get a lot of compliments on my voice. But that's I know, I feel like, you know, like you listen to me, and it's like, you know, a meat cleaver. And then we have this sultry voice on the See? other side. That's what you, <laughs> you don't know? want to do. Don't put yourself <laughs> down. Uh, well, but might... that's the thing. We are all on a different place on, on the mm -hmm. spectrum here, you know, in terms of understanding what that means. For me personally, I just don't look back. Honestly, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't spend a lot of time watching myself. I don't spend a lot of time listening to myself. 
Um, you know, I try you like to say anything? nice things to myself, like, oh, I look really oh. good there. Oh, I like that shirt. That's I, a good you know, color on me. You know, things like that. Um, I the try. writing could be better. <laughs> but for me, the best way to not be critical is to not look back. Yeah. And, but I will say this, if the people that you are looking to as your heroes in some of these areas are people who have huge staff or they've been doing live streaming for years and years, like the Gary Vaynerchuks and Brendan Burchards and people like that, you have to go back years and see where they started instead of looking at today. Because where you are today as someone beginning and trying to get comfortable with the camera, you can't, comp you can't be playing the comparison game all the time. Every show that you do is building on the previous experience. So when you look at it as, you know, do I look good and sound good? Like it's all, it's all about where you are. It's not about a comparison about where yeah. you are versus where somebody else is. And I think that that really helps with, you know, the grounding process and like helping, helping people understand, you know, what they need to do. I mean, it, again, it comes down to practice and, and then also, acceptance yes now Practice i have a partner who is 73 and a lot of times he'll say well i'm not some young pretty person people aren't going to listen to me and <laughs> i'm like that's an excuse that is an excuse to keep you from doing it so do not use those do excuses it. nobody yeah. really cares what you look like they care more about what you're talking about are you of offering value um yeah as long as they can hear and and understand you, they're happy. Right. Yeah. And then, um, you know, be authentically you. Uh, well, I have a problem in that I can't be fake. <laughs> so like, if you talk to me, I'm just me. Uh, but I understand that there are, we all have kind of a veneer that we put on, you know, I maybe haven't been, I haven't been sharing all of the times I fell down in, in, um, concussion therapy or the frustration oh. of not being able to be on camera all the time or like all the things that are going on behind the scenes because you know i mean everybody has their own life and their own privacy but being part of being authentic is saying look i got stuff going on too right. <laughs> everybody has stuff going on and then you just keep pushing through it and you keep working through it um and you be authentic about who you are what you know what you don't know which I think is really important too. And then just keep sharing that and keep, keep at it. It's true. And when you are vulnerable, it gives other people the permission to be vulnerable as well. If you want information from somebody, offer your own first, right? Yeah. I, you know, I am feeling this. I went through that. I had this happen. My mom had a stroke. How many people reached out to me and said, I had a stroke. My dad had a stroke. People, reached out to me after I shared uh, what was going on in my life. It gave them that permission, that opening to share back. So don't be afraid of being vulnerable about those types of things that are going on in your life that may be going on in other people's lives as well. Yeah. yeah you know, it was interesting. I shared about the concussion. I've been talking about it on the podcast for a while, but I shared about it for the first time on Facebook and which is where I go for primarily friends and family. I don't go there for like business and stuff, but there are some people who follow me um, from the business world. And it was really fascinating. You know, all of my friends and family just rallied around and they were all like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. And I hope you're doing better. And like, it's been very touching. And then the people from the business world who are on there were like, oh, I can't believe your authenticity. I can't believe you're sharing this. And I'm like, I can't believe that, that you're, saying that you know yeah. it's important it is important to let people know what's going on you can't be it can't just be fake all the time you have to share little pieces of you because it's your humanity especially if you're a small business or a solopreneur like these things are really critical as part of mm -hmm. you know because you are, you are the brand you are the, the face of your business and yeah. you need to be a real person so I, th I think we've talked kind of about how to be authentic authentically mm -hmm. you on there mm -hmm. Um, and then it's kind of, it is really about diving in and getting started. So I, I love that you have written down here, you know, invite friends um, to watch and comment. Um, I will say that I was so freaked out when I started on camera. I would do Facebook Lives set to private. 
um, and I didn't let anybody see it. Um, and it was to practice, just figure out like how to turn on, how to turn it on and how to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I love this idea of inviting friends to watch and comment. That's right. Because sometimes we do things that we don't even know we're doing. Uh, we might say a particular word like, uh, oh, 100%, 100%, 100%. And we might say it so much that everybody else is super annoyed by it, but we don't even know we do it. So that is an excellent way uh, to have people comment and say, maybe tone that down on, on that 100% thing because that's a little annoying. Uh, or maybe you do a thing that's very distracting and people are like, why are you doing that? <laughs> Stop it. I, I do it. I admit it. I try not to. I And the filler words in the beginning, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of, um, yeah, like, you know, that happens. Those tend to go away, but not all of them. <laughs> I still do it. That is the that is leading into the next one. I'm on uh, by the way, that is why I believe you need to edit either edit your own videos or your own transcript of your videos because then you say, "Oh my gosh, I say the word just so often," or I start okay. every sentence with "and" or "so." I need to cut that out because that's just annoying, and I have to I have to take it out every time, you know. Uh, so you begin I to feel see seen. those things. I say so a lot. Mm -hmm. I also we say all do. And a lot. We all do. But it and has been a great experience. I want to say that I fully agree with that. I, it has been a great experience for me to go through my own videos and transcripts. I use Descript. I know that there are other programs like Otter and, and things like that. That's the power of that because then you begin to see the ticks that you have because everybody has things that they do. And the way to improve, I think, is to really go through and see that and then make adjustments accordingly. And I wish Toby would do it because he'll use a hundred words when three would do, you know, <laughs> and I'm always cutting. Okay. I'm just going to cut this chunk out because it's just a bunch of words that don't mean anything. And let's just get to the meat of it. Um, exactly. So when, yeah. So when you edit things like that, you can go, Oh, here's the meat. Why did I say all this junk? Why did I repeat it five times? You know, <laughs> Oh, but we did have the Toby is awesome event. So we know we're not busting on Toby 100%. So um, and then the last point, we're going to wrap up trading. Oh, my gosh, are we gonna, we're going to come in under an hour for sure today. Look at this uh, is the only failure is giving up. I don't really have a lot else to say than that. I, you know, I think that that's that's it. That's the thing. You know, you've yeah, got to so keep don't it. take out, don't take down all your videos because you, you know, unless for some reason you like totally change what you do for a living or, or whatever, don't take down your old videos just because they're not perfect and don't uh, give up. Don't keep trying, keep getting better. The only way to keep getting better is to keep doing it. Yeah. Uh, you can't, you know, if, if you're like, I said some really horrible things on this and I don't want that to be what people think of me, then go ahead and take that down. But <laughs> other than that, uh, if you're just sharing content and you're sharing your vulnerability and that sort of thing, don't take that down. Keep going. Keep building on that. You're going to get better and better. And you're going to get more and more people showing up each week when you're consistent like that. A hundred percent. And I think that a lot of it too is, yeah, I mean, you have to practice, you have to, you have to keep going and it, I've lost my entire train of thought. I have to admit I had a point <laughs> and I lost it. It'll probably come up later. Perfection um, is a process. Perfection <laughs> is a process. Yeah. No, you know, it's, it's important to not get rid of old things that unless they really aren't relevant and it's important to keep going. It's easy to give up, you know, it's easy to, mm -hmm. and then at the same time, you have to kind of acknowledge that sometimes you do need to take a pause. Like I had a pause on this show for a long time. And now I feel like it's back and stronger in a lot of ways because it has a lot more focus. It's nice to have somebody else to talk to. Um, it's really important to kind of, you know, refocus and re-energize your everything that you're going to do. Oh, I remember now what I was going to say. So I'm in these creator programs right now. And one of the things that was super discouraging was reading in the ghost uh, creator, creator platform, creator group that I'm in, they said the first hundred blog posts are practice. 
And I was like, are you kidding me? Because I went back and looked and I have like a hundred blog posts. I'm like, this is all practice. You know, I've been writing my whole life. You know, how can this only be practice? But then at the same time, the flip side was of that was, oh, okay. Yeah. If I go all the way back to my original blog posts, they were kind of crummy. You know, if I go back to my original videos, they were kind of crummy. And the point of that is that it's all a process. We're all learning. We're all growing. We're all continuing. And you can reflect on the way things were. And instead of deleting it, you just go, oh, wow, I have like really developed as a presenter. I have really developed my ideas around certain topics in ways that I hadn't imagined. And I will tell you, sometimes I go back and I'm like, why haven't I talked about that? <laughs> that is still really important, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And now I have more experience and another way to talk about it that's mm -hmm. different. And so having that history understanding that in the beginning it is practice and you're just going to get better and you're just going to naturally get more comfortable is really critical to this process as a creator, as someone being creative in your business. I have two things to add to that. So when I started my LinkedIn newsletter uh, in January of this year, I wasn't quite sure where I was going with it. But I was just trying to, you know, bring people together on LinkedIn and let them know who I am and what I do. So I had done news, I had done articles on LinkedIn in the past, but this was going to be a newsletter. And LinkedIn gets behind you with that and helps you to promote it. But um, it's grown um, more than my email list has grown. So I'm, I'm happy with it. But every week I, I start off with here's what's going on in my life. And here's how that relates to me as a marketer. And I, you know, I'm like, wow, I really did. I'm really, you know, done really well with the way I shape my writing. And right. I wouldn't have been able yeah. to do that uh, two or three years ago when I was writing blog posts, I, I had to practice to get there. Exactly. And the other thing I wanted to say was my friend, uh, he is a social media content entrepreneur, and uh, he said it's going good. Uh, he has his his channel, his Instagram account has gained over 15,000 Instagram followers in less than 24 hours. And I was like, wow, how did you do that? Just posting a reel every day and one got featured. So wow, this yeah. guy has worked at his craft I, I know he's been podcasting since podcasting started in like 2004. He's uh, done YouTube ever since YouTube came out. You know, he's been working yeah. and working and working at it. And people don't know that about him. They just suddenly find him and he's like, and they're like, oh, you've got, you know, 3 million followers on TikTok and you've got, you know, a million followers right. on Instagram. You're really famous. That must have been wonderful that that happened for you. And he could be like, I've been working on this every day and putting out reels and, you know, and, and doing the work and, and being there showing up. And that yeah. is what gets you to success. And that yeah. is all you have control over is how much you put into how it. How much you do it. And yeah, I think it's really important. I have an earlier episode about this. There's no such thing as overnight success. That's right. That's a myth. And it's funny when you hear people talk about it, you know, and they're like, yeah, everybody says I'm an overnight success. Boy, I wish they'd been here five years ago, seven years ago, 10 years ago. That was one ago. long night. <laughs> a long night, you know. And so that's what's really important here is, is working your way through that. But the only way to start is to start. And the only way to get there is to keep going. And that's the encouraging piece about it is that we're all on this journey together. We're all figuring it out. We're all doing things. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, hopefully we've done a good job. If you have more questions or comments about how to get more comfortable on camera, if you have something that has really worked for you or a tip that, that maybe we didn't see, or if this helped you anything, um, please do uh, let us know, um, you know, comment, on any of the live streams, send us an email, um, anything any like that. There's fears that, that you have that yeah. we didn't address. We don't know your fears. We know our fears. We know our <laughs> so fears. Then tell us so yeah. we can address that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, feel free. You can email me at jen at womenconquerbiz.com. Um, I'd be happy to hear from you and, and learn from you. Um, I also wanted to invite you to, su to subscribe to the Women Conquer Business newsletter. If you go to womenconquerbiz.com newsletter, 
you can get it there. Um, it's all the previous issues of the newly released newsletter are there. And then um, it does come out weekly. And there's usually some sort of training in there, um, some articles, things like that, that are, are helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, what else would you like to share, Shelly? Oh, uh, check out Livecast Life book on Amazon. There are a couple of chapters in there about uh, confidence and um, feeling good about being on camera uh, and how to prepare yourself to do that. So that is at book.livecast.life. Awesome. Check that That's out. That's great. And uh, so tweaks of the week. Tweaks of the week. <laughs> I don't have my soundboard him at home yeah. today um, because we're getting ready to travel, but uh, tweaks of the week. Okay. So this happened to me, the friend I was just mentioning. Uh, that just got his uh, big, big bump on Instagram. He has a YouTube channel and every Sunday he does a live stream because his live stream coach told him to a couple of years ago. Is that and, you? Um, I take full credit for it, but he... <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Um, but I watch his show on Sundays and uh, during this, and, it, and it's kind of a fun little comedy puppet show. Uh, and he's got a, a wide range of viewers from kids all the way to adults, you know, and and uh, it's it's kind of like Pixar in that he'll do humor that the kids sometimes maybe don't get the full right. understanding, yeah. but the adults are like, ah, ha, ha, you know, so it's a great show. And I was watching it on Sunday and I'm not a member of his channel, uh, but there are many members who show up every week. And suddenly I was gifted a membership. And I was like, what the what? Uh, <laughs> so oh, I, I got a free membership through a gift. And it was just like, ta-da, you are being gifted a membership. Do you accept? And I'm like, yeah. Sure. Uh, and then I got an email that said, you were gifted a membership to this channel by another member. And it's good for a month. And then you're at this level. So you can, you know, take advantage of all these perks and go visit there now. And so I, I got to check it all out. Really great idea. It's in beta version right now. Oh. It's not available to every creator. Um, but if you are watching a channel and somebody says, do you want a free membership? Just like, yeah, and enable. And then yeah. you can, that can give you a free membership. It's really um, cool. And it's a great way to check it out. So if you have a YouTube channel and you're putting together a membership, can think about doing that, you know, because you can give a free membership for a month. They can check it out. And uh, if they like it, then maybe they'll, continue to pay for that membership in the future. Wow. That's cool. And yeah. I'm learning through ghost that I have a way of doing that too. I can awesome. gift, gift memberships. I have a membership um, related to women conquer biz. We're also getting ready, ready to relaunch um, our reimagined epiphany courses also on ghost. Um, and we'll be able to do that as well. And what I have been just jamming on and I love is it's called heartbeat. It's a community platform that's very similar to Circle or Mighty Networks, some of these different platforms that's offered right now on AppSumo. Uh, starting at $69, um, I would actually recommend getting the tier two, which is, uh, I believe, $159, $156, something like that. Um, and again, through AppSumo, it's lifetime. Um, this is a company that has some bigger clients, it's much more established than some of the other um, lifetime offers that I find on AppSumo. Um, I have been testing it, using it, working with it. Um, it is excellent. Um, you can put courses in there. That's what makes it kind of like, like Mighty Networks is that you can do courses in there and community, or you could just do community and take comments and stuff. It takes you out of having a Facebook group, um, for mm -hmm. example, or a LinkedIn mm -hmm. group gets you off of social media and, and into a different platform um, for engagement, discussing things like courses or podcasts, things like that. Um, it's been um, wonderful uh, and it will, it's one that I think could potentially take off. So it is a good tool to consider if you are really looking at having or building a community. That's right. And Jen and I have been talking about that as well to build our own joint community uh, for content creators and create a sort of a membership and heartbeat would be the, uh, the underlying container yeah, the, for that. Yeah. 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 Container, the community. 
And uh, be- with me traveling and stuff, we we're, we're still in you know in talks and putting it together and you know <laughs> trying to make yeah. it happen. We're it's, not going to give up on it. <laughs> but we're busy, you know, and yeah. launching and yeah. launching companies and handle helping family and there's just a lot. And yeah. you know that everybody who's who's listening and watching because you are in the same position as we are. But we want to provide support to other people who are going through the same thing. Uh, and of course, we have the experience of going through it now. So yeah, <laughs> we could share that. Yeah. Um, so I, do you want to close this out with a inspirational nugget? Inspirational nugget. Well, this is from my daily stoic. And if I felt it was very fitting today. What if I stopped caring what others thought? Don't spend much time thinking about what other people think. Think about what you think. Think instead about the results, about the impact, about whether it is the right thing to do. Uh, earlier this week, Toby called me and he he said, uh, there's these people on YouTube who are talking about me and saying how wrong I am and they're, you know, they're just being mean to me and I was, and I want to make a video and I want to, and when it say something about it. And I was like, um, no. No. I said, why are you even watching that? What the other people think about you is none of your business. That is their thing. Uh, what you I want you to do instead is look at all the nice people that say nice things about us and what they're asking for. What kind of content do they want? Let's focus on that. Let's not respond to that negativity and expand on that. Let's think about ways to be more positive and um, let those people go. <laughs> so yeah. And, and, and it's kind of a, it probably makes me sound, you know, I don't know, but I truly believe that you get more of what you focus on. <laughs> so That's true. That focus true. on, focus on the good, focus on the people that you're helping focus on the people. It's so hard to do. I, I understand, but yeah, focus, focus on what you want more of and, and you will see it. You see what you're looking for. You find what you're looking for. So, um, and it's hard. I think I've mentioned before, we've, I've got like a, a YouTube hater. I don't even have that many followers on YouTube, but there's one person that every time, no matter what video it is, is immediately dislike. So um, I just have to let that go because yeah. I, I don't know who it is. And um, I am in a way crazily honored that they take the time to come hate on it. Like. <laughs> It's engagement. So it's engagement. And all those people who were talking bad about Toby, all the people who were listening were like, well, huh, Who's I better Toby? go check that out. So they come over to our channel and watch Toby. Yeah. So really, it's it's a good thing. So yeah. let it go. Yeah, so let it go. <laughs> <sighs> Boy, that feels pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Just letting go. Yeah. Well, have a have fun this weekend. Yeah. that's possible with, yeah. you know, traveling and getting everything set up and everybody out there. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Let us know if there's something that you would like us to cover next week. We are going to talk about scripting and, you know, getting your show flow template together so that you can be more, it's again, one of the things we talked about for being more comfortable, uh, but it is also a great way to plan things out and, and get your content aligned with your mission and goals. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for joining the Women Conquer Business podcast, hosted by Shelley Carney and Jen McFarland. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question regarding your most challenging content creation or business problem. Then share this podcast with family and friends so they can find the support they need to expand their brand and share their message with the world. Check the show notes for links to valuable resources and come back again next week.